everybody, welcome back. We are in chapter three. We're picking up where we left off in the guided portion video for chapter two. So what we will do is kind of fine tune our um, app that we, I mean, our GUI that we have now. And we're going to also start adding pictures and make this particular um, GUI functional. As you recall, right now, nothing is functional. When we take the program live, um, we nothing happens when we click on these buttons. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to make sure that we add photos and then start setting the visibility properties and enable the properties, okay? So first, let's go into um so we did change the if you notice we changed the color of these buttons here what i wanted to indicate is that you can also change the color of your form so if you click on your form and you go to back color you can also change the back color of your form let's just do white and you'll see that it changes um that form to white okay you're not required to do that, but just, you know, in creativity, just include making sure that it's visible, nice coloring, and it looks presentable, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is go and get the photos. Now, all of your photos pertaining to each chapter will be found inside of Canvas, inside of your file section. So if you click files and you go to student data files, and depending on the chapter, um, there aren't any for chapter two or one because we don't really um, use images or anything like that or text files or anything like that. So um, it will start with chapter three and you'll notice we have several different photos that are in here based on whichever uh, assignment you decide to do. So um, right now we're working on the guided portion. So we need the deep dish and the thin crust pizza. However, if I assign the um, uh, case at the end of the chapter, depending on which one I assign, you will come here and select the appropriate photo that you will need for that particular GUI. So let's move over here and we're gonna go ahead and grab this image here, this deep dish. And we're going to click on it. I don't know why it's taking so long. And when it opens, you're going to click download. And then we're going to close and we're going to go ahead and do the same for thin crust. And once it opens, it was visible, we're going to click download. And you'll notice here in the bottom left-hand corner that both have downloaded, okay? So minimize that. And now we're gonna come here and start um, importing it. So let's come here, remember each, um, I think I kind of moved it a little bit. Um, so click on your first uh, picture box, and then you're gonna come over here to image. Make sure you are at image and not background image layout it's a difference, okay? Whenever you're importing a photo, you're always going to come to the image property. And then you're gonna click, click the ellipses and it's gonna open so that you can import your photo. So you're gonna make sure the project resource file is selected, make sure that radio button is selected, click import, and then you'll go and find your photo. Generally, when you download and anything that you download is generally is always in the downloads folder. So you go to the downloads folder and we're going to click deep dish and we're going to click open and you'll notice that now it has added the deep dish. Okay. You can also go ahead and import the thin crust so that is in the file. So now you have um, both of them in here. And now you will select the one that you want to import. So you'll notice here, our first picture box is for our deep dish. So we will import deep dish first and click OK. Notice the sizing, um, it looks a little weird. So over here, you will go to size mode here in your property section and you're going to click stretch image and you'll notice that it modifies the size of the image so that is visible okay 
and you're going to perform the same task with this particular one. So go ahead and go to image, click the ellipses. This time you're going to grab the thin crust, click OK, and you're going to follow the same step with the size mode. Uh-oh, I think I clicked the... Um, there we go. Stretch image and you'll notice that it changes and you'll save that, okay? So that is how you will import images into your project and then that you will use the size mode to resize it, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do, remember when we talked about visibility, um, what we want is we don't want the pictures displayed. So let's, let's go ahead and debug so we can see what's happening right now, what it looks like. So you'll notice everything is visible. So what we want to do is when the form loads, we don't want any of the pictures to be visible. All right. So right now you can see them, but we don't want to be able to see them when the form loads. So let's close that and you're going to click on it. And what you're going to do is you're going to come over here in your property section and go to the visibility um, or visible property and notice that it says true. Now, we're going to talk about variables in chapter four, but just to kind of give you an idea of variable of a var Boolean variable, Booleans are always true or false. They only hold one or the other. All right. So in this case, visible is set to true, which means, yes, I want it to be visible. All right. But we don't want it to be visible. So we're going to set it to false, which would be the opposite. So now we're going to change that value to false so that when the form loads, it's not visible. We're going to do the same thing for the thin crust. Go and change its visible property to false. All right. And make sure you, um, you're catching, you know, key concepts as we're moving forward. So notice now that the uh, the images are no longer visible, okay? But also, remember we talked about instructions and the instructions label and the confirmation label. The confirmation label should not be visible either because we're, it shouldn't appear until the user clicks select pizza, all right? So let's close that. Click on enjoy your selection, which is your confirmation label. And you're going to also change its visible property to false. So now you've set it to false and we're going to save it and we're going to debug again, just so you can see the changes that we made. So now notice that the images aren't visible and the, um, the confirmation label is no longer visible. Okay. Now, what you have now are your buttons. So notice that each of your buttons are selectable. The only thing is we have not um, written any code as to what we want to happen when these buttons are clicked, okay? So all of three of them are, or all four of them are enabled, okay? Now, in some cases, you don't want your user to be able to click on all the buttons. Sometimes you want some of them to be disabled, okay? So if you'll notice, sometimes your, we'll, I'll show you and then you'll kind of have an idea of what I mean, okay? So the only two buttons in this case that should be enabled are your deep dish and your thin crust, which will allow them to select, decide which one that they want a deep dish or I want a thin crust, okay? So that means select pizza and the exit button should not even be enabled. They should not even be able to click on either of those and nothing should happen at this point. So what we're going to do is change both select pizza and exit buttons enabled property. So click on the select pizza and then we're going to come over here to find the enabled property, which is here enabled. It's set to true, which means, yes, I want it to be enabled. I want to be able to select, I want to be able to click it, but that's not what we want. We don't want it to be enabled. So we're gonna change it to false, okay? Same thing for the exit button. We're gonna change the enabled property to false and we're gonna save it 
and we're going to look at it and see what we have here. Okay. All right, so notice how it's grayed out. So now I can even click on select pizza. If you recall, we could click on it before and it will highlight it was enabled. So neither of these are enabled. So that means now the user can only click deep dish or thin crust, okay? So now that we have these two buttons set up for the user to click, now we have to indicate what we want to happen when the user click that button, all right? So what we're going to do, so anytime you want to write code for any of your objects, you will have to double click that object. So the first one that we're going to write code for is the deep dish button. What I want to happen when the user clicks this button. So double click it. And notice that it takes us to our coding window. So this is where you will write your code and make your program functional. Notice that, I'm gonna try to make this a little smaller. Let's do 70, okay. Hopefully this is still good for you. So notice how um, it has cre created a class. So all of your programs, all of your forms that you create is going to be is a class in itself. And what that means is anything inside of here where public class begins, and here it ends. Anything inside of here is pertaining to that form. So whatever you want to happen, whatever you want to take place pertaining to that form will go inside, okay? Another thing is each of your objects have its own procedure. And what I mean by procedures, if you've taken C++, you, you, know, you know it as functions. If you've taken me or someone else for Java, you'll know it as a method. So inside of Visual Basic, it's called a procedure. So that means now inside of this particular form, all of these objects have its own procedure and I have to indicate what procedure is to take place. That's the way I want you to think about what task I want to take place. So right now we have our deep dish button open and now you have noticed that it's a deep dish click. So that means when that button is clicked, type in here what I want to happen, okay? As long as it's in between where the procedure begins and where the procedure ends, all right? So be very mindful of where your beginning and ending endings are for your classes, for your procedures and all of your loops and everything as we're moving forward, okay? So the first thing that we're going to talk about are comments. Now, comments are non-executing statements, all right? Those particular statements are, are for me and you. So here, at the beginning of all of your programs, I'm going to enter down. At the beginning of all of your programs, you should have your name. You should have the name of the project or in the date, okay? So that I'll know that is your work when I'm downloading and grading. So in order for you to have non-executing statements, you're going to use an apostrophe, all right? And then put your name here. I'm going to just put my name and then enter down. And I'm going to put the project is just, um, let's just say, Let's just call it Project Pizza Selection. Got it. Let's call it Got It. Perfect. All right, and then we can have the day, today's day. I know if you're watching this video later, it's probably um, uh, not the same day. <laughs> um, so now we have our date here, and this is just information for me and you. You can also have um, comments inside of your procedure. So this here, I'm gonna tab over and I'm gonna put a comment here that just says um, what my particular button is supposed to do. So each of your procedures should have some type of information as to what will happen or what's taking place. So this code executes when deep dish button click, all right? These are comments. So this is just to kind of give me an idea of what you were attempting to create, if it worked or if it didn't work. 
um, whatever the case may be, those are non-executing, which means they won't be um, read or interpreted and they won't appear on your form or anything. Um, it's just for me and you, for, for us to um, communicate certain things with each other, okay? All right, so those are comments. So now that we have, and remember all of your programs should have your name and all that information at the very beginning. So now that we have all of that done, um, we're gonna move into going ahead and entering certain statements, okay? So inside of this particular procedure, we wanna indicate what we want to happen, all right? For this one, um, because we are dealing with the deep dish, if this button is clicked, we want the deep dish picture to appear, okay? And since they're selecting this deep dish pizza, we want the thin crust picture to remain invisible, not visible, okay? And once they have selected click this particular button as well, we want the select pizza button to be enabled. So now I've clicked on the dish and I'm ready to make my selection, okay? So in order for us to do that, instead of changing it in the property section, we're gonna write a few simple um, coding statements. Now these, when I say statements, it's a command. You're commanding the computer to do something. So here we wanna tell it that we want, as soon as the button is clicked, we want the deep dish pizza picture to appear. Now, what was the name of your object? What did you call that deep dish pizza um, picture? Remember, it started with PIC, so it'll automatically, we know where to begin. And notice it pops up what you have already created. Generally, you're gonna get your options first of things that you created, then it's gonna have a plethora of other options. This is called your IntelliSense here. It, it pro basically provides that information on for, uh, ahead for you. That's what makes using um, IDE so great, okay? So now you decide which image that you want. We have deep dish, we have thin crust. We're dealing with deep dish, so we're gonna get the deep dish one, okay? Now, because we're trying to access a particular property of that image, we have to use the dot operator, or the. in this case, most of the other cases, you're gonna hear it as a dot operator as a, instead of a period, okay? Because it's performing a task, it's creating a connection between your picture object and the um, property visible, all right? So now you're accessing visible and you're, so you're gonna start typing visible. Notice that IntelliSense provides it. And now you have to assign that a value. Remember that visible is a Boolean, right? So it can only hold true or false. And we're gonna use the equal sign, which is not considered an equal sign, it's considered an assignment operator. So that means now whatever I place here will be stored inside of that particular um, location, all right? So now we're wanting to set the visible property to true, all right? If you recall beforehand, we had said it's false inside the property section, but when you're writing the code, it's gonna work a little different. So now we're taking this picture, a deep dish, and we're making it visible. We're setting it to true. And then remember, we don't want the thin crust to be visible. So let's go ahead and write a statement that makes sure that the visible property for the thin crust is false because we don't want it to be visible, okay? Now, the next thing is we want our select pizza button to be enabled. So now we wanna enable our select pizza button. So what does button start with? DTN. So now it appears to show the buttons that we've created, okay? So you have your actual button. You have here where you have your procedure here. You have your exit button, your select pizza, and your thin crust. So this one is gonna be our select pizza. That's the one that we're wanting to enable. So notice it pops up. We're changing the property for the enabled. 
So now we're gonna set that to true because now we want it to be enabled, all right? So before I move forward, let's just notice this code is inside of the beginning and end sub for your button click, for your deep dish click. So whenever your button deep dish is clicked, this is what's gonna happen. So just to make sure you're understanding how it's being process and how it's changing. Let's look at it. All right, so now we click deep dish. Notice that it appears and notice now select pizza. I can click it. All right, nothing's going to happen because we haven't written code yet. But notice what happens when we click the deep dish. Now the picture appears. Okay, so that's what we just did. That's what we just fixed. We just made our button um, event driven. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're off to a great start and you're, you know, processing and understanding what's happening. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do the same for our thin crust button. All right. So let's go back. So we're going to toggle between the two. Notice you have your, um, your code here and then you have your design phase here where you're designing it. So we're gonna come back to this window and we're gonna double click our thin crust, all right? So notice how it adds the next procedure there for you. So now we have our procedure for our thin crust. So remember that each of your objects will have their very own procedure. They will have their own task that they'll take, that will take place, all right? So now, it'll, if you'll notice, it'll automatically open for you. Don't try to remember all this and type all this here, all right? Just double go back to your window, um, double click it, and it'll, if, you, if I do it again, it's going to take me to the same spot, all right? That way it's easier to find and to make sure you're having everything correct, okay? So of course, for this one, we're going to pretty much, add, we can add some more comments, um, this code, Execute when then press button click. All right. So of course, what do we want to happen? This time we want the thin crust to um, be visible, that picture to be visible. We want the deep dish picture to disappear. We don't want it to be visible and we still want it to also make the select pizza, pizza enabled, okay? So let's start with our thin crust. We're gonna make it visible. So we're gonna set that to true. So now that I've selected my thin crust, let's get rid of the deep dish. We don't want that one to be visible. Set that to false. And then let's come here for let's select pizza, let's enable it. So make sure you're using the appropriate um, property. All right, enabled makes the button um, clickable. Visible is just about appearance. Is it going to be visible on the screen or not? Okay, so let's save that and just test it out so you can see the difference. Now that we've added that. So we have deep dish, it appears, thin crust doesn't appear, but the select pizza is now selectable, all right? Thin crust here, notice thin crust now is visible in um, the deep dish disappears, all right? That's what happens, and it's going to happen every time you click whatever you put in here, that's what's going to happen, okay? And we have the select pizza, but we haven't written any code yet as to what we want to happen, okay? So, that's how far we've gotten so far. So now what we're wanting to do is we want to set up our code for our, um, which one? Our select pizza. Let's do that one first and we'll do exit button last. Okay. All right. So what you want to do, come back here, double click your select pizza. Notice now you have a new procedure. So notice how your code window is increasing. It's increasing in code. Okay. Um, I do. I cannot. Rec I cannot recommend this enough. Please do not just go and use the um, the code window solution that's in the textbook and just type it up. 
one is it has a couple of errors sometimes two it defeats the purpose of you creating your programs and it's gonna hurt you in the long run you want to make sure you're understanding how to create and write from scratch and understand what's happening okay so don't just go and type that up all right it's good to follow the steps all right so what we want to happen here is um for the for the select pizza um we have the instructions that are visible what you want to do is just make the confirmation message visible because they've made their selection and you want the instruction label to disappear which means you no longer want it to be displayed all right and what you want to do now is also make all of your buttons false like you don't want them to be enabled so now that you're pick your deep dish button and your thin crust button should not be clickable anymore because now that i've made my selection i can't go back okay so let's start with um let's start with the instructions all right the label lbl and we have our labels here that we created so let's do the label instructions visible equals false we don't want the instructions to be visible all right, but we do want our confirmation to become visible. So LBL, the confirmation dot visible. Let's set it to true, right? All right, now the button, not pick, sorry. The button for deep dish, we, want, we don't want it to be enabled anymore, all right? So set that to false. Also, the button for thin crust should not be enabled. So we're not being able to click anything else. All right, now that we've done that, now we wanna make our exit button enabled so that the user can exit, all right? All right, so ETN exit enabled true because we want it to be clickable, all right? Let's save what we have so far and let's just test it out so you can see what's happening. All right, so deep dish, thin crust. I'm making my selection and you can notice that you can click select pizza. So select pizza, notice these are no longer, they've grayed out, these are no longer visible, I mean, um, clickable, they're not enabled. Notice that the instructions label disappeared and the confirmation label appeared. Um, and now the exit button is here for us to click the exit button, okay? So notice how we have set it up to just basically, um, perform just a little basic tags right now. So now we need to write the code for the exit button. All right, so if we come back to our design, double click the exit button. Now, all of your programs should have an exit button, no matter what the diagram or the GUI looks like, no matter what it looks like, you should always have an exit button and when you learn the file menu script, a lot of times students like to start adding their exit there, which we'll talk about in future chapters. But you should always have some option for the user to exit out of your form, okay, besides clicking the X. Now, for this particular one, um, there are classes embedded inside of the Visual Basic language that are already pre-written, and some of them we may want or we will want access to, okay? Um, sometimes we want to use their procedures. And there is one procedure that we want access to, which is the close procedure, which we don't, um, this is basically when you're looking at encapsulation where we can't see what's happening or what code has been written for close. But I know that when I type close and open and close parentheses here, um, it is going to access whatever the code is for this particular form or this particular procedure and it's going to close my form and you'll notice here that it indicates here closes the form okay um we haven't gotten into procedures yet which is in chapter seven 
But what I want you guys to remember is that your procedures will always have a set of parentheses here to indicate that it's a procedure. And that's how it can help you depict it. This here is a procedure call. I'm calling this closed procedure. I'm calling it. So that means I want you to go and access the code wherever it may be. And I want you to perform whatever task it is meant to perform. So I'm calling that procedure and it's going to close my form for me. Okay. So um, let's put a comment here for your note purposes. All right. And let's go ahead and see what we have. So notice like pizza and those are not um, enabled. You have your instructions here. You click, you can toggle between. All right, we're gonna select deep dish this time. Select pizza, notice that it's disabled. Your confirmation message is here. Now you can click the exit button and it closes and takes you back to your coding window. All right, that completes chapter four. I mean, chapter, sorry, chapter three. Um, make sure you're walking through it and practicing a little bit, reading through the chapter to get a little bit more acquainted with um, writing statements, understanding your assignment operator here, and um, how you can write like little simple commands um, to have your per, uh, program perform. In chapter four, we're going to go in a little bit more in depth where now we're going to be retrieving data and um, calculations and different things like that. So take a moment, go ahead and practice a little bit, and let me know if you have any questions. See you guys soon.